Hello everyone, nice to see you again, and welcome back to Pacific Front Channel. We are on the last day of October already, and you know what time it is, right? Correct, it's Halloween. I'm kidding guys. As usual, today is the time for us to recap on what happened in the Indo-Pacific region in October 2021. I prepared 5 interesting stories today, from the KF-21 program, naval exercises, and more. So, without further ado, let's check out the first story. South Korean Defense Acquisition Program Administration, or DAPA, recently said that South Korea and Indonesia are edging closer to an agreement about Indonesia's financial agreement on the KF-21 Development Program. Sadat from Jane's article on 26 October, a DAPA spokesperson said that the two countries remain in talks over Indonesia's payment on the project, and the agency is confident that an agreement can be reached soon. The spokesperson also indicated that once the agreement is in place, Indonesia's position in the KF-21 program could expand. As we know, after the actual design was selected in 2015 and the budget was outlined, Indonesia would pledge 20% from the 7.5 trillion won or 6.3 billion US dollar in development cost. In return, Indonesia will get 50 aircrafts, access to technologies, and know-how. But along the way, Indonesia didn't pay the required money for the program. Several issues can be the reasons, from funding problems, corruption scandals in South Korea that made Indonesia adopt the program, restricted access to some technologies and studies of the program, and more. After years of renegotiation and uncertainty, I'm happy to hear that we might see the end of the drama. Because right now, there is no time for drama anymore. We need to put our focus on the production of the aircraft. And by the way, I also found an interesting article from aerotime.iro about the history and the drama behind the KF-21. It summarizes what happened with the new jets from the beginning until today. I put the link in the video description below if you wanna read it. On 26 October, Indonesia's Ministry of Defense handed over two Bintuni class landing ship tank for the Indonesian Navy. The ceremony was held at PT Bandar Abadi Shipyard in Batam, Indonesia and attended by the Minister of Defense, the Chief of Staff of the Navy, CEO of PT Bandar Abadi, Commander of the Navy's Third Fleet, and official from the Ministry of Defense, Armed Forces HQ, and the Navy. The two vessels, KRI Teluk Weda 526 and KRI Teluk Wondama 527, will strengthen the Navy's amphibious unit. In addition, until 2024, the Navy plans to have 12 vessels of this class. The Bintuni class has a length of 117 meters, beam of 16.4 meters, and a top speed of 16 knots. She has a crew of 111 personnel, can accommodate up to 367 troops, can carry up to 10 Leopard tanks or 15 BMP-3F, and has a flight deck to accommodate a 10 tons helicopter. LST in general is not as demanding as a combatant ship. While PT PAL engage in more sophisticated contracts like frigates or submarines, giving a contract like this to private shipbuilders can give us a lot of benefit. First, it will make private shipbuilders grow and continue to innovate, and second, we can avoid bottlenecks in vessel production. Still from the Indonesian Navy, starting 22 October, the Navy conducted an amphibious operation exercise in Dabo Singkap in Riau Islands. The exercise consists of 33 Navy ships, 16 Navy aircraft, 39 Marine Corps combat materials, and 4,300 soldiers. The Chief of Staff of the Navy said that the goal of the exercise is to improve the professionalism and operational readiness of Indonesian Navy soldiers, and as a benchmark for the result of training, development, and integration of the Navy's components over the past year. For this exercise, the Navy deployed components from the Navy's 1st and 2nd Fleet, Marine Corps, and the Hydrography and Oceanography Center. Whilst the training materials consist of anti-submarine warfare exercise, air defense exercise, anti-air rapid fire exercise, anti-surface warfare exercise, and amphibious landing exercise. From the videos and photos that are circulating in the internet, I'm very happy from what I see. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the first time we see our fully armed PKR Sigma exercising together. And I think it's my first time seeing our Navy ships conducting replenishment at sea as well. Imagine what the exercise will look like in the next 10 to 15 years, when Frame, Mestral, Arrowhead, and probably Mogami enter service. I'm sure our fleet will envy our neighbors. I feel so proud just by imagining it. 
from Indonesian waters, let's move to the Philippine Sea. On 3 October, the UK CSG, GMSDF, and the US Navy conducted multiple carrier strike group operation in the Philippine Sea. The integrated at sea operation brought together more than 15,000 sailors across six nations. The strike groups conducted flight operation and air defense exercise scenario as well as simulated strikes against maritime targets. The operations also brought together FA-18 Super Hornets aboard Ronald Reagan along with F-35Bs from both the UK and US Marines operating from Queen Elizabeth and F-35Cs aboard Carl Vinson. It was the second occasion where the F-35B model operated together with the C model. The first time was when Carl Vinson and Queen Elizabeth conducted joint interoperability flight in August. To end today's video, in early October, Japan's Ministry of Defense announced that US Marine Corps F-35B will start a series of tests aboard helicopter destroyer GS Izumo. The test took place between 3 and 7 October and include takeoff and landing of the F-35B from GS Izumo. It was the first time since the Imperial Japanese Navy that a fixed-wing aircraft took off from a Japanese vessel. Last summer, GS Izumo arrived at her home port after completing the first phase of modification work to operate the F-35B. The modification include new deck markings and heat-resistant coating of the deck. Commander of Escort Flotilla 1 of the JMSDF said that this trial has proved that GS Izumo has the capability to support takeoff and landings of Stoffel aircraft at sea which will allow GMSDF to provide an additional option for air defense in the Pacific in the near future. In addition, Japan has already budgeted for the purchase of 8 F-35B for fiscal year 2020 and 2021. In total, JSDF plans to buy 42 F-35B to operate from GS Izumo and GS Kaga. Before I go, I realize I haven't thanked you guys enough for spending your time watching my videos. So when I took a week off from YouTube last month, I used it to create several designs as a thank you gift for you all. It's not much, but I hope you like it. It's wallpapers for your desktop and phone screens. I must apologize in advance if the image don't fit perfectly on your device screen, because the dimension I use for the design is a standard HD resolution, while your device might have different dimension. Please check out the link in the description to claim it. And if you use it as your desktop or phone background, Mention me on Instagram at pacificfront underscore yt and I will put your picture in the next video. With all that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.